same day. <laughs> okay. I don't just live in this vest. I do change my clothes. Um, today, well, I say today as if it was a different day than half the other videos, but um, we're going to be, for this particular video, going for, where is it? There we go. Strawberry. I'm not looking forward to this one. Can't lie. I'm not. I'm not predicting it's going to be a nice flavour, but we're going to give it a go. episode. Um, I thought it was going to be longer than eight. But going into today's episode, I was very concerned how much they were going to get done. Um, and uh, I think maybe my feelings were validated a little bit. But yeah, I think I'm going to go just talk about my, my feelings about the show overall. So, a bit of background. Um, I love Star Wars. I have for a very long time. I'm going to give a very hot take right now. Only even though you can see, maybe you can't see. I say that is because I grew up watching Star Wars, playing Star Wars games, consuming Star Wars content. And um, so I love it. I never actually watched Clone Wars when it came out. I watched a bit of it, but I didn't really. I, I think I fell into that trap that a lot of people did, which was like, it's a kitsch. 
show because it's a cartoon. But come on now, but it's not true. Uh, plenty of anime will tell you very differently to that. But it's obviously not an anime. It was on a kids show or a kids channel, but it is uh, was was it was made obviously for children. It's very easy to consume it even as an adult, and so I but I, I never watched it um, other than the other episode, and then Ripples came out, and I I just looked at the style and decided no, nah, I won't like that, so I just kind of gave it a miss. And then a couple of years ago, I don't know what it was, but just got into a, a feeling maybe it was the fact that people were talking about characters that I didn't know and stories that I never heard of. And that made me feel like I needed to go and watch, so I did. Went and checked out Clone Wars and fell in love with it. Thought the first few seasons were a little bit. growing pains and all that and I enjoyed Rebels now the reason I bring that up is because Ashoka is a big part of both of those shows both Rebels and Clone Wars and so I felt like um, it was important to give that context so it, it was only really been recent that I watched those and, and learned of Ahsoka and stuff in the last few years same. I was very excited to see her in The Mandalorian. I thought that was awesome. And then further, obviously having her own show. So, there's a lot of stuff that's built up for the Ahsoka show from things in the past, you know, like, of course, confrontations with Anakin and Darth Vader. And a lot of baggage. Um, there's obviously been some stuff that's happened at the start of this and I thought it was interesting that she was training Sabine um, I really like their dynamic so that was a lot of fun to see um, when the show started uh, the Ahsoka show I didn't really know what to expect I knew it was going to be something to do with Thrawn obviously I'd seen the trailers um, and they quite clearly spoiled the fact that he, they did in fact find him. Um, and so I kind of knew that was coming, but didn't really know what it was going to be about. Um, the first two episodes I really, really enjoyed. I thought that, you know, they were well paced. I'm not going to go into like depth of, of you know, filmic language and things down because it just brings kind of contention and I'm not really here to spill my personal review just rambling about it really um, but I felt like I could keep pace with the first few episodes it felt like they were something that I was enjoying uh, watching I felt like a lot happened and it was pretty good a point in which I began to feel like it started to slow down a little bit when they arrived at the planet I I didn't really quite understand the whole thing where um, oh, and by the way spoilers <laughs> I didn't quite understand um, why they like the Republic did, New Republic didn't believe Hera um, it felt like some like inside job stuff going on there that was never explored. I thought that would, but it wasn't. So, um, some stuff there with that. Um, but otherwise, you know, the first few episodes were decent. Um, I thought it was funny seeing people complaining about Sabine getting stabbed <laughs> and surviving. And then you look at like everyone else who's been like attacked and stabbed and survived, not only just through like the Disney period, but well, I guess more was it the Disney period, but other characters.
Rogers as well. And then poor fucking Quai Con Jen gets a single jab in the stomach and dies. <laughs> so I thought that was funny. Um, of course, some people come up with some in world reasons, but the fact of the matter is, they wanted Quai Con to die. Quai Con would stay dead, and that was it. If they wanted to find a way to get him out of death, they would. Um, so. I found my first real moment. Um, there's just something about the way in which Ahsoka fights in live action that just doesn't feel fun. I don't know how to really describe it. Um, I was talking to someone about this today. Um, I just feel like Ahsoka is very slow in combat. Especially when you go from very vibrant, acrobatic um, fighting styles in uh, Clone Wars. And I understand this animation is exaggerated, but you look at like prequel movies and they're still more acrobatic. And it feels like every time she moves, it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like it's choreographed, like obviously it's choreographed, but like it feels telegraphed to the enemy. I just felt like she was too cumbersome. Maybe that's the point, but it was to the point in which it felt like you were waiting for them to just hit each other's lightsabers, like there wasn't actually any dynamic in the fight, which sounds nasty. It wasn't all like that, but I just began to pick up on that quite a lot. Um, that said, the standoff bits because there's a number of moments where there's like a, a standoff perfection, I love that it felt very much like they were leaning back into the samurai western uh, style um, much more like samurai I guess and that was cool to watch some real like homages to those uh, old movies like Kurosawa movies lots of fun to see I was glad to see that in there um, I loved seeing the comparisons to Treasure Planet. <laughs> so there's an orb that gives a map to another galaxy. And I didn't even pick up on this. But it's like almost hand for hand taken from the film Treasure Planet. Which is just so funny. Um, I don't know if that was an intentional reference, but that was amusing. I felt like there wasn't a reason that it was explained why there was this orb that gave a map to a specific galaxy. It just so happened to be one of the galaxies in the billions that exist in the universe. That thought was that I felt like it was a very weak hook that wasn't really explained. And not everything has to be explained, but when you're asking for like such a wild circumstance, I think it's within reason. Um, like even if it was something like uh, the civilization that made it had predicted some kind of like big um, sort of force thing in, in that location and the whales were drawn there because you know they're force sensitive or something and that's why it, the coincidence matched up they uh, got taken there or something like that um, either way, you know, they head over into that, uh, find their way there, uh, but before that, Ahsoka has a great little moment, episode 5, probably going to be regarded as the best episode of the series, it's my favourite episode, now, is it because Hayden Christensen returns as Anakin Skywalker, yeah, probably, but also, I really like more artistic uh, elements. Like a narrative is fine, a linear story is cool. Um, or, or I guess kind of what I mean is more like naturalist. Whereas this was like visions and stuff and, and it felt... Uh, I don't even really 
how to describe it. I just really enjoyed it. I thought that was a really good way to explore their relationship again and bring in creative Christians in it. Um, whilst it not being too on the nose, it gives you some different ideas of what happened in the Clone Wars and one of the big things I think it did to a lot of people, including me honestly, was remind you how young she was as, as a child during that time period, which I think a lot of people forget, including myself. Um, so, I really like that episode. Then after that, you know, they get to the planet, they find Ezra, some stuff there and I'm going to skip over a, a bunch of stuff because I felt like the next few episodes were really slow in their progress um, I I have a few issues with how they represented Thrawn now Thrawn obviously wasn't a creation of Dave Filoni's um, he existed before shows in uh, old legends and then they brought that character in because it's a smart decision but I felt in the clone no sorry in rebels um Thrawn was much more tactically minded that was much more competent there's a few things that came to mind uh, as to why I felt he was basically incompetent so first of all first of all he turns around to these three uh, night sisters these night mothers and says I want you to locate the soaker and in about I don't know like it's hard to judge the, the passing of time, but it couldn't have been more than an hour, surely. Um, she, uh, they even managed to locate her in an asteroid field outside the planet. Somewhere else in the system. Um, well, I guess technically on the, in the asteroid ring in, around the planet. Quite a fair distance when you consider the, uh, well, the distance in space. Okay, keeping that in mind. And yeah, he doesn't know where Ezra is. How? How is this man eluding you? How are you able to find Ahsoka in a ship? Somewhere in the solar system. And you can't find Ezra, who is, and I'm telling you, not even a day's journey away from you, in a camp of other creatures. It's not underground. It's not in a hidden location. I I would I, I would be able to accept. Oh I, my gain isn't too high. Oh it is quite high. I would be able to accept if um, if the reasoning was something like um Ezra's underground in an old force sensitive temple and the force is protecting him. But it felt like there was no real reason given. Um, like, he just can't be found. Alright, fair enough. So, I found that was a bit weird. Like, why can't you find him? Um, secondly, uh, it keeps sending troops out. to stall them but he sent a bunch of troops out and, and literally said they're there to distract them so he can leave when they defeat them he calls them back and waits for them to return why your whole point of sending them out was to be cannon fodder so you could leave but you didn't and now they're travelling back in that final episode and they managed to get on and he's only saved by the plot because the plot 
was an ex tactical genius that helped. He did it by the skin of his teeth, and Ezra escaped with him. So it wasn't clearly to plan. And every scene, it felt like he was falling apart slowly. Like you could just see him, like realizing he was making mistakes, or like, or being some, not even that, not even that, but being like surprised that something went wrong. Is it supposed to be one of the more, the most tactical geniuses? That they are uber afraid of returning. Now, given this man is not Darth Vader, right? He's just a dude. He doesn't have the force. He's just a guy. Okay? The only thing that he represents that as a threat is, well, two things. One, that he's the, the, he'd be the last living, highest ranking Imperial officer that could tie the remnants together. in my 
ready to leave is just so stupid. And the reason it's stupid is because it's not even played out like this. It's a long journey, right? Star Wars has always been very, like, annoyingly ambiguous to the, 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 the length of time it takes to get from point A to point B. It seems like it wasn't even days that they were travelling through from one galaxy to another. So what do they need the cargo for? What is it? Is it like prized possessions? Now, if the cargo had been name dropped, now, unless I missed this, and as the, the cargo had been name dropped as like something really important, then I'd be more akin to believing that it's necessary, but I can't think of a single thing that would be so important that you're going to risk not getting home for it. So, that's what I mean. He doesn't know to go, okay, cargo, let's not, let's, let's just abandon this cargo and go now. Let's just leave. Fuck the guys that are distracting them. We don't need the rest of the cargo either. The payoff is worth it to get rid of the Jedi, the, those Jedi. So, yeah, not, not impressed. In the end, only Ezra made it out. They shouldn't have lost Morrigan. Yeah. So. I left the end a little bit uninspired, so to speak. I felt like, yeah. I felt like it could have been better. But overall, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed seeing uh, Rosario Dawson. I think that's uh, her name. Playing Ahsoka. I think she fits the character. I love seeing Adrian Christensen back, and I, I thought the idea of bringing in Thrawn again and doing all this was a fun story. I just wish they made Thrawn actually feel like a threat rather than like I don't I don't even know how to describe him like a washed up soldier. You know, it, look, it sounds like it always seems like he lost a few brain cells over the uh, years of staying there. So...